So I am from a place called Queensland, Australia, which I think makes me pretty lucky because Queensland is one of the most naturally beautiful places in the world. It's the home of the Great Barrier Reef, the Daintree Rainforest, amazing beaches. I'm doing a bit of a tourist pitch, you should come and visit. But you might have uh, heard about it recently because we've been a bit in the world news lately because of catastrophic flooding that's been taking place right across our state. A uh, land area twice the size of Texas was underwater. 86 cities and towns were declared disaster areas. 29,000 homes were inundated by flood water and 35 people died. And just as we were starting to think that the worst was behind us and we could start to rebuild, a Category 5 tropical cyclone 1,000 kilometres wide and stronger than Hurricane Katrina uh, surged across the Pacific Ocean and slammed into the north coast of Queensland, one of the few places that wasn't already covered by flood water. So we've had a bit of weather and it's been an extraordinary experience. And one of the things that transfixed me during this time was the intensity of the community's use of social media, not just to stay informed, but to come together and to, to be closer as a community. And I know that there are people in this room who are interested in using social media to connect to readers. So I thought I would share with you the lessons that I learnt from this flood and the storm about social media, and because we're here at TOC, also the insight that it gave me into publishing. And the first of those lessons is love. Uh, I've got to tell you, I am absolutely gooey caramel in the chest cavity for my fellow human beings right now. And it's all because of the amazing outpouring of community spirit um, and volunteerism that's happened as a result of this experience. In Brisbane, 23,000 people um, showed up to volunteer to help clean mud out of people's homes and businesses. And some of the best examples of, com of community mindedness we had was on social media. And I'm sure it's no surprise to you that the people who are most retweeted most linked, most followed, were the people who wrote with heart and with humour and with compassion. Social media doesn't just collapse geographic distances, it collapses emotional distances as well. One of the best things about a distributed network is that every node on that network has a role to play. And you know, we saw that in the flood when a volunteer developer, uh, before the flood peak had even uh, reached its height in Brisbane, had released a flood resources app um, for iPhone on the App Store um, for everybody to use. Uh, social media is a tool, but if your only use of that tool is to broadcast your message, then you're missing out on some of the best part of its value. Your community wants to contribute to you, and their contributions have value. Ultimately, it's not about you. Uh, you know, there were plenty of official government sources that were tweeting and using Facebook during the, during the flood crisis, but only a handful of them became official go-to sources for the community. Just being the owner of a service or a brand doesn't automatically validate your message um, in social media or in the community. It's the community that gives your message validity. It's the community that bestows approval. And the pathway to that approval is in being social. But being social isn't just about using social tools. It's actually about caring for the individual members of your community. Bookseller and Publisher magazine, which is actually based in Melbourne, um, used Twitter and locative media to track the well-being of every single independent bookseller in Brisbane, which only intensified the care and pride that the bookish community in Brisbane had for its beloved indies. Just this morning in her keynote address, Margaret Atwood said that technology is a tool, and she's right. And you know, the key to social media isn't in mastering the tools, it's in serving your community. Which brings me to the insight that I had um, during this time about publishing, and which I can do a shout out to Brian O'Leary, who published the best blog post on publishing in 2010, and who you're gonna hear from in just a little bit. You know, during this time, uh, there was nothing that a book publisher could publish that was going to be relevant for me at the height of the flood and of the storm. But there was plenty that a community-driven media organisation could do and did. You know, there, was, there were short story collections published before the water had even gone down. There were digital stories enhanced with animation and music and geotagging that were published online. My point to you as publishers is not that you need to be aware of the context in which you're publishing before you select the container for your content. My point to you is, there is no container. So 
Queensland's already started to rebuild, and no doubt there will be um, a number of books about this extraordinary time for Queensland. Uh, but the story that I am most engaged with is the one it, it, where there was a conversation taking place in the community at the height of that time. And as publishers, I urge you not to miss out on that story. Thank you. <laughs>